All set, Sue? Please. All right, thanks. Good morning to everybody. Appreciate you coming today. So, wanted to um, uh, talk about fan experience. We are laser focused, is how I would describe ourselves on making the fan experience better. We introduced a number of concepts last year that were well received by our fans, and we aim to make the fan experience even better in the 2019 season. Um, I also want to thank our fans. Um, over 9,200 new season tickets sold and a 96% renewal rate in football, which is absolutely fantastic. And the enhancements that I'll talk about, they're all designed and they're all byproduct of surveys and comments we've received from our fans. So we're trying to be as responsive as we possibly can. So I'm going to list a, a number of items in detail here. First, in the pregame, uh, Houston the Quad returns. Uh, we debuted that last year. It was very well received. Uh, a couple new items this year. We'll have live music each week as part of Houston the Quad. We'll also have four big screens underneath the tent so fans can watch uh, other games. We're going to expand the footprint of Houston the Quad as well. One thing that we saw last year is the capacity. We were at capacity, so we want to create some more room for our fans. So we're excited about that. Um, North Campus Shuttle, we will begin that three hours prior to kickoff on, North on the north side of campus through Walnut, Walnut Park, Comstock, and Ostrom Avenues, and the drop-off will be at College Place. And this is really uh, a result of, of uh, surveys and, and fan feedback we got primarily from our students. Um, traffic flow, uh, ride share, we'll have two drop-off locations. Last year we had one. We'll have one at the corner University Place in South Krause Avenue, and then we're going to add a new one. The location is on Van Buren Street between Henry Street and Stadium Place, down by Brewster Hall. So again, we encourage fans. It's an easy way. You can take Uber, you can take Lyft, drop off, pick up point. We'll have wayfinding back to those location points um, after the game. We will place more electronic, large electronic signs, four of them, to direct traffic once people exit the highways to kind of help guide our patrons and our fans to their specific parking lots. So that's new. The other is Jamesville Avenue. We're going to make one way prior to the game and one way post game to expedite, expedite traffic flow there. We think that'll help those who park up at Skytop. So again, all part of the reaction that we've gotten from our fan base. Uh, mobile ticketing. Uh, fans can receive their tickets in three ways. Uh, a mobile, mobile ticket through their MyQS account or the QS Athletics app, which is really user-friendly and simple to use. Uh, you can still get hard tickets through the mail, and some like to do that. Uh, we have discontinued the PDF tickets, uh, and a number of schools and a number of uh, professional teams have done that as well. It's just too easy for it to be fraudulent exchange of tickets there. Um, Orange Rewards is part of the uh, Syracuse Orange app experience. Uh, fans need to download the app, again, which is really easy to do. You can search Syracuse Orange, but it offers fans the opportunity to win prizes, rewards, experiences through trivia, challenge, et cetera, that type of thing. It's all designed to be, to be fun. It's fun, it's easy, and it's fast. Uh, the clear bag policy, which we instituted last year, uh, we will carry that over in the 2019 and 20 season. And that's really now become second nature at every major venue across the country. Um, and it does expedite entrance into the dome and it does enhance security as well. Um, last and one that we're really excited about is uh, concessions refresh, uh, upgrade and some new offerings. Um, first, all fans can bring two bottled waters as long as they're sealed into, uh, into the dome. Um, second, uh, refreshed and rebranded concession stands. We have a new popcorn stand. It's called Salt City Popcorn. It's going to be popped fresh uh, pre-game, during the game, etc. That's located near section 118. We have two orange express stands. Um, those are kind of a cashless grab-and-go type thing with a focus on healthy items. Again, feedback we received from our fans. So there'll be wraps, there'll be salads, there'll be hummus, fruits, uh, Pepsi bottle drinks, orange juice, et cetera, that type of thing. There'll be two of those, one by Section 104 and the other by Section 317. We're also at a number of, of our concession stands, primarily on the first-level concourse. We've added new HD screens so people, when they're in line, 
They don't have to miss the game. They could still watch the game. We've also uh, digital menus on a number of the concession stands as well. All I think it'll make it easier for our fans to be able to look at the menu, read the menu when they get up, they're ready to order, so we can expedite the process for all our fans. So again, um, it's a comprehensive uh, plan that we have with a, with a focus on an, it continuing to increase uh, and enhance the fan experience. It doesn't happen without tremendous cooperation from a number of units and entities across the campus, so I'm very, very thankful to them. And I encourage our fans to take full advantage and sample uh, the new opportunities because it's all done uh, with them in mind. So with that, I'm happy to take any questions. Um, and nowhere in the written enhancements or uh, in your remarks was the word carrier used. What's the status of carrier as the name of the dome? You know, again, A, number one, it's great to see the, the, the construction underway, right? It's been talked about for so long. You know, the name is still on the outside of, of the building. Um, our focus is on, obviously, the construction project and the fan enhancements, which I just uh, d d uh, described for all of you. But the intentional not use of it in your season ticket it's not, packages? No, it's not. It's not. I think our fans in, in, listen, I've been coming to games forever. I've always referred to it as the Dome. Again, the name carrier, it's on the outside of the building. Um, so there's, that's, there's no intent there. Do you expect the name to continue for many generations in perpetuity? You know, time will tell. I'm not really good at predicting the future. Um, kind of continuing on with the dome, can you kind of talk a little bit about what some of the renov renovations that people can expect? And then also, um, where will the lacrosse team be playing? Because I know that the renovations are supposed to be kind of happening during their season. Right. Well, the renovations, obviously, it's underway now. And there's a, you know, it's an incredibly complex project because by itself, right? You know, the new roof, that's an incredibly complex project, and we're still using it for football and both basketball programs. Uh, lacrosse, will have, both teams will have the opportunity to use it in February. Um, last year, men's lacrosse played an outdoor game at uh, Cicero North, which worked out well. Um, and the uh, and women's lacrosse team played at, uh, at CBA, and that worked out well. So I would, we've had conversations with them and our facilities people. Um, I'm not, it's not done yet, but um, both venues worked very well for so us last February year. Anyway. Pardon me? They'll be there for February? Yeah. Okay. Chris? Um, John, I, I know you said there was no intent, but obviously removing 46 references to carrier in a media guide is a lot to pull in an off-season. Um, why now? For that, uh, why did that happen during this offseason? You know, again, Chris, there's no, you know, there's no rhyme or reason here. Underlying, you know, no underlying story per se. The name is still on the building. Um, again, I think we're trying to use the, the the language and relate to the language that our fans use. Our fans refer to it as the dome. We're proud of it. Um, we're excited about the renovations that are underway to create a, a new and a better experience for our fans. So no signal that, hey, we'd like to renegotiate or... You know, no, there's, process. again, we're focused on, this This project is so complex and, and what we're doing, we're focused on that. Carrier said they were going to reach out to the university after the ticket seasons went out without their name. Have they reached out to you? And what are the conversations with Carrier like? They've not reached out to me, no. Um, there's been all this buzz on social media about the crane, which is helping to build the dome being named Walt. Um, and on social media, a lot of students are taking selfies with the crane. Um, I was wondering if the school is aware of that, has any reaction or response to the I was not aware that, uh, that, uh, that the crane is been affectionately nicknamed as Walt. Um, so no, I haven't. I do know students have tried to take selfies around there, et cetera, and that type of thing. The other thing I should add, because it's, it's a question that's probably would be asked, is for the Clemson game, all gates will be accessible. Other questions for John? Chris? Uh, this is probably a dumb question, John. Is all, are all these changes also for basketball season? The water and everything, does that carry over? Or is this we're, Chris, we're focused right now on football. When we get closer to basketball, we'll do something similar for this. But this was, you know, we really wanted to hone in on, the, uh, on, on football. These enhancements come before really the, the main construction is even started. Talk to the fact that this is a direct response to what fans have asked for. Well, I think it's really, it's, it's really important in this day and age to be in touch with your customer no matter what business you're in. And you know, we're in the business, and it's something we talk about constantly, we're in the business of helping people make memories, right? Memories with their friends, their families, their fellow students. 
and we've got to provide those opportunities that you can't replicate if, if, at home so that fans are going to come and we're going to provide them a great game day experience. So from the time they're on campus till the time they get back home, they're going to have a fantastic experience. Obviously, the centerpiece of that is the game. But again, in 2019, you've got to provide you know, a comprehensive uh, day of entertainment in, uh, in programming for, for your fans. I think concessions because, again, direct feedback we received and there's a tasting for the media. It's 7 o'clock tomorrow night at the Dome. Um, you can meet outside of Gate A, so I encourage you to take full advantage of that. But I think that's something that we're really excited about is, is to create more offerings, create more variety, upgrade the look a little bit, the functionality. Um, we think that will be well received. Olivia, um, this also may be a dumb question, but um, can you just kind of talk about briefly what some of the renovations people can expect to be? I mean, I haven't heard too much, so. Yeah, I think, again, as, as you go back, it's kind of a top-down approach, and it's something that, you know, Pete and I have talked about from the beginning. All right, you do the roof. When you do the roof, that's the right time to do the lighting. That's the right time to do a new sound system. And I think lighting and sound is, can, is underestimated in terms of the impact they can have with a fan experience. And you talk about, you know, four-sided, you know, center-hung scoreboard. So there's going to be a wow factor, and, and I can't wait until our teams get to program that. Um, you know, not only the video board, but also what we can do from a sound, what we can do from a lighting perspective, because again, I think that'll really add to the entertainment aspect. Chris. Um, so I, I know the initial renovation plan had concession upgrades by 2022. The right. ones we're going to see tomorrow, are those the upgrades we're going to see by 2022, or will there be more? This is separate and distinct, Chris. So this is just work that we identified that we want to you know, do in the off season again, all based on the response of our fans. So it does not impact um, what we have planned for 2022. So fans will see some upgrades now and then more to come? That is, that's the plan, yes. How much work had to happen this summer to pull these specific upgrades off? A lot, and again, I mentioned across so many units of the university. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm really thankful to everybody. I'm thankful to our staff. Um, Anthony DeFino really led our effort from our team. And uh, a lot of work. It's not, it's not easy to do, but it's, it's you know, one that we were focused on and great collaboration from so many of our colleagues across campus. Uh, Hainer Hoyt. I, I don't, Chris, I don't know the percentages per se, but we've communicated out to our, our fan base and to our season ticket base that we'll, the PDFs will be discontinued, but here are the options that you do have. So we have communicated with our fans on that. Thank you, John. Thank you, All everybody, right. for coming out today. Thanks, everybody. Yes. Have a great rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.